Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lucilla. In this episode of the Back to Portugal series, come join Paolo and me as we visited a prehistoric megalithic site that predates Stonehenge, visited a cave with upper paleolithic rock paintings, greeted the famous black pigs of Alentejo, and watched the sunset at the Troia Peninsula in the Atlantic coast. We're on the road this morning, and where are we going? We're going to Comporta, which is uh, on the other side of Portugal. Still in the uh, Alentejo region, but they call it the coastal Alentejo. We're leaving the city of Évora behind as we made our way towards the west coast of Portugal. Passing the surviving arches of Evra 16th century aqueduct. Can you see one of those uh, stone circles? Yeah, sure. Right but before we even got settled in for a long drive, we made a detour to check out one of the best preserved megalithic sites in Portugal. In the farmland around Evra, at least 150 megalith sites have been found. This landscape, the Sierra of Mont Furado, houses an exceptional concentration of archaeological sites, among which are some of the most remarkable prehistoric monuments in Europe. It is a territory shared by the municipalities of Evra and Montemor o Novo. We can imagine this landscape about 10,000 years ago, after the end of the last glacial era, virgin and practically uninhabited, covered by forests, human communities, mostly nomadic hunter-gatherers, were confined to the coast and estuaries of the main river. A megalith is a large stone that has been used to construct a Neolithic structure or monument, either alone or together with other stones. This site in particular, made up of 95 stones, is approximately 7,000 years old. This predates Stonehenge by 2,000 years. Circle of stones standing. It consists of several structures, such as a circle of standing stones known as cromlech and upright stones known as monoliths or meniers. The name almendras comes from the stone's almond shape. This cromlech is precisely aligned to the equinox. Archaeologists believe that this cromlech and a nearby monolith are aligned with the sunrise on the summer solstice. Look at the view, see what it got to, all the way down this valley. Look at that, is that Sebo down there, I think? Or is that uh, Montemore, maybe? The stones are laid out in an elliptical shape from the top of a hill and no, down the Montemore. slope facing east. I don't know what that is. There are two elliptical sections, with the lower one being older than the one up on the hill. It's in a, a very beautiful location, especially surrounded by the cork trees. The cromlect was built when people transitioned from nomadic hunting gathering to sedentary permanent farming settlements. This also coincided with the appearance of crafts such as pottery and weaving and the skills to grind and shape stone tools. Stone circles such as this started to appear during the Neolithic era when agriculture uh, became domesticated, when settlements and, and people started to uh, farm wheat and other uh, crops. People needed to be in one place to observe the movement of the seasons, the sun, moon, and stars. They also needed to organize themselves to be able to transport these stones from far away to their final resting place. Evidence of at least four Neolithic settlements was found in a 10 kilometer radius around this cromlech. 
this is pretty exciting for me because I always wanted to uh, uh, tour archaeological sites and I have done that over the years but I've never gone to uh, places such as these before from the Neolithic era and so this is very exciting because the shadows I guess you gotta you gotta catch it the right I guess the shadow the sun the, the, the shadow of the sun will also so you could see the markings yeah, on the uh, rock here We're checking out, we're checking for the uh, the marks on the stones, but it's very difficult to tell with the shadow. Even after 7,000 years, the ancient markings and engravings still fascinate us. We're just a few minutes away from Escutral Cave. This has been a beautiful drive along the what is it? The N? N370. N370. On either side, we could see big estates, uh, vineyards or for, vin for vineyards or for cork. And there's no cars ahead of us. There are no cars behind us. That's been pretty common during our little road trip here. Once we got off the highway, main highways. Rolling hills. Oh, there is one car. After the tour of the megalith, we got back on the road for a tour of the Escurel Paleolithic cave paintings, dated to about 15 to 20,000 years old. It's not possible to keep the discovery a secret because the day they found the cave, there were only two people here. And in 1963, there were no cell phones, so they had to... The site was the first in Portugal in which prehistoric art was identified, and the only location that has examples of Paleolithic artwork consisting of motifs, engravings, and paintings of animals, abstract forms, and geometric shapes. So the only part, the parcel that they expropriated was where the cave is actually yeah. located. Yeah. But it's very likely there are more caves. The problem is how are you supposed to find them? It has rock art images, uh, so the, the legislation be, yeah. is more restrictive I when see. it comes to pictures inside the cave. We weren't allowed to take pictures inside the cave to protect the paintings. So I took some images off the internet to give you an idea of the cave paintings and engravings. Inside, there were elevated boardwalks for visitors. At the entrance, there were two visible paintings as shown here. Three red lines with a point possibly representing a hut. A horse with its head and mane shown in profile. As we continued with the tour, we saw a number of paintings and engravings. On to Comporta. As we continue to head westward, the Alentejo landscape rolled by. Yeah, you find some cows, you find some sheep. Yeah. Uh, not too much goats in this part of the country. Um, we did find, we did see some some uh, goats here and there. Uh, anything that's fenced off, they all, they will likely have some grazing animals. So that's why it's fenced off. We saw a group of the famous Alentejo black pigs grazing by the side of the road. The meat from this breed of pig is priced for its taste and nutritional value. They eat the acorns and seeds from the oak and cork trees. Thank you. 
As we got closer to the coast, rice fields started to predominate. The estuaries in this area of the country is known for its cultivation of rice. Portugal is the fourth largest European rice producers behind Italy, Spain, and Greece. A breed of cattle were let loose to graze on newly harvested rice fields. By late afternoon, we passed the town of Alcacer do Sal and were just a half hour away from Comporta by the Atlantic coast. So these are the pine trees that actually produce pine nuts. If you ever had any pine nuts, they come from this type of tree. As far as I know, this is the only sort of type of tree that does, that does produce pine nuts. Uh, there's probably a proper name for this particular pine tree. And I'm pretty sure they're also available in uh, probably like the California coast or something like that. I'm, I'm not sure. I think they'd be a bit transplanted there. They're not just planted on the side of the road. They're actually being used for agricultural production. After checking in at the hotel in Comporta, we drove towards the tip of the Tuaya Peninsula for the sunset views. Just beside it, there's a small little town beyond that windsurf. Yeah. Windsurfer. Yeah. I believe that there is uh, 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 Team Darabi, where we went to have lunch one time. Okay. We were in Zimbra. Yeah. So it's very windy. Uh, I don't know if it's like this in the summertime. This is the up. boardwalk, but it's filled with sand. <laughs> So the sun is setting, it's about 5 o'clock right now. The uh, snack bar is closed for the season, but I can just imagine during the summer that this place would just be full of people just watching the sunset from this vantage point. The sun has set now. 
There's no more clouds in the sky that will really uh, highlight that sunset. Uh, I'm gonna head back to the car because uh, it's gonna get dark very shortly and there are no lights around here anywhere. So uh, it will get really sure dark. Make sure we can get back. So we're heading back just to be on the safe side. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to see more upcoming videos of our stay in Portugal.